G'day everyone, my name is Cautious Pancake and today I'm going to show you how to build a ladder out of water in Alpha 21. Then use the same technique to build a super quick exit chute from your base. And lastly, how you can even use this build approach to help slow zombies on Fortnite. While checking block properties and how they interact with the new water physics in Alpha 21, I found that there are a few blocks with properties that don't seem to indicate that the water flow has been fully implemented for them. And while testing these produce some inconsistent behavior, I found that there are three blocks that will currently hold water even when there is a gap underneath that should cause it to flow. Of course, this means that this could get patched out in the future, although it's not hugely game breaking, so it might not. We'll see. The blocks that are of interest today are all variations of the same block and can be found under the decorations section. The blocks are the plate facade 01, plate facade cap 01, and plate facade tile 01. These blocks, when put in a single block gap like this, will hold the water at the top of the block and above it, like so, and forms the basis of all of the base features we'll be looking at today. It's worth noting that it doesn't work if you just put it on the side of a building, it needs to be within a confined space. So how do we turn this into a ladder, I hear you ask? Well, taking this building as our base location, we can start to build a similar structure on the third block from the ground. Place in the facade block and throw in a buckle of water from underneath and nothing happens. Working on a ladder to get to the top of the structure, however, adding the water again and voila, a stable floating water block in Alpha 21. From the ground then, you can jump up into the water and swim upwards onto the top of the structure. Now what I'd hoped for, for the water ladder, was that you could then stack these on top of each other and repeat up to the top of the building. But unfortunately, there's a small problem. After adding in a second structure, from the ground jumping back up and swimming, leaves us just short of the water in the second section. Sometimes it's possible to get a jump in and get up to the next section, but it's a bit hit and miss. To work around this, I found that it is possible to add in a small block that will allow us to get some extra height by standing on top of it but isn't so large as to block off the hole that we are swimming through. The best block I've found so far is the one quarter sheet. To add it in, rotate it to the bottom and then add it in on alternating sides as you go up the ladder. This gives the extra height that we can swim up to from the bottom through the first water block and into the second. Repeat the process up the side of the building and then you've got yourself a water ladder. Oh, and unfortunately, you can't get around using the quarter sheet by adding another facade plate block on top of the layers, as when you add it in, it gets rid of the water. So that's how you make a water ladder. Is it as easy to build as a ladder? No. Is it a more efficient use of resources? Also, no. Is it faster to climb up though? No, not that either. And stop asking questions. It's just much cooler, okay? And leave it at that. Now, once you've built yourself this masterpiece of an entrance and said farewell to boring ladders, you might be wondering how we get back down again. It is possible to use the water ladder to also return to ground level, but it's a bit slow and I think we can do better. Besides, on a normal ladder base, we can also use hay bales to jump off the side, but sometimes that still hurts a bit when you land, plus you have to make sure that you aim it right and stick the landing. Obviously, jumping straight off the side of the base is also possible, but not advised. Instead, let's put the water ladder at the bottom, again, third block from the ground, put in the cube box, then the facade plate 01, grab a ladder and a bucket of water to create the landing zone, then head back up the top, and by jumping off and aiming for the water, when we hit it, it will slow us down just enough so that we can touch down and not have any damage. This makes for a super speedy exit from the base. However, as it is, there's still some risk, as you've got to aim for and hit that very small single block target. To help line things up, we can build a backstop to prevent us from running too far like this. However, even after doing that, it's not necessarily accurate enough to make sure that we hit the water just right. So the last thing we need to do is add a guide chute, and the cube one meter hole block is perfect for this. Adding two of these blocks underneath the backstop where you step off will help make sure you're all lined up and will never miss the hole. It's worth noting that this doesn't need to be limited to small buildings either. Here's Higashi Tower with a water ladder and escape chute. And while the ladder can be a bit slow to climb, The shoot is a super quick exit.
You'll notice, of course, that for the shoot, I've added two layers of water instead of one, and that's because once you get too high, a single water block does not slow you down enough to prevent an abrupt stop at ground level. Now, I also promised you a way of using this for Horde Knight, and I think that this is something that would be best used early on before you have access to electric fences. Here we have a pretty standard looking killing corridor, but along the inside of the corridor we can also add in the plate facade block at the bottom row like this. Then we can throw in some water, which will put the blocks above the facade block just like in the water ladder. This will sit about head high on the small zombies and chest high on the taller zombies and force them to swim through the water, slowing them down for you to shoot. From front on, this is how it looks when you've got a small zombie like Arlene. And here's a taller feral zombie as well, and you can shoot both of them through the water or above the water. You can see that there's a big slowdown on the feral, not as much as barbed wire or electric fences, but the water here doesn't need to be repaired or be replaced, so it's a good option to add into your base. Okay, time for the bonus bit. There's one more thing that we can use this technique for, and that's as an effective rage mode countermeasure. Normally I go for builds above the 11 block range that I worked out now for 20, but if you don't have the time, materials, space, or desire to build that big, then this might be for you, particularly if you're using a loot base. I'm certainly not the first to try and use water to stop rage mode, but normally to do an anti-rage pull underneath a loop base, there's a bit of digging to put in the pool, plus a little bit of work to get the stairs out, and it's often not 100% effective, especially in larger hordes where zombies fall on each other's heads, they can still go into rage mode. But as a quick test, here's a floating two block wide pool underneath a standard killing corridor, or at least the outline of one, and as you can see, this feral zombie looping around and around hasn't gone into rage mode once. However, if we get rid of the water, then you can see that rage mode quickly comes back into play. There's a question mark in my head though on how well this will work with lots of zombies, so let's get in, say, 10 ferals and see how it goes. And as expected, that's not working well. So let's try that again. I've moved the drop point and water blocks away from the wall, so there's no path from the water to the base. This should encourage the zombies to either go up and out or back down and around. As you can see, there's still a little bit of an issue with zombie stacking, but it's better. Raising the base a little bit more to create some distance between it and the water, or even combining this with the previous technique to add in some water on the path, which will slow and separate the zombies, should help with the stacking issues. But don't add any space underneath the water, as that could lead to the zombies falling far enough to reintroduce rage mode. Around three blocks is the minimum from memory. So there you go, a new technique on using plate facade blocks to trap water in Alpha 21, which you can use in a variety of ways. Let me know in the comments what you think, and if there's other uses that are worth exploring. I hope you've enjoyed watching, if so please give the like button to give this video a boost, and if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe and come back for the next one. As always, thanks for watching, and happy building!